Tina Andrelini the owner of Rio, and she's our keynote speaker, and she's going to be presenting a talk entitled What's Ecosexual Love? A Guide to the Arts and Joys of Morris Inclusiveness. And I would like to just give a, a brief bio, uh, biographical, <laughs> or biological, she's an ecosexual <laughs> biologically, biographically, Serena believes that a world where it is safe to love is a world where it is safe to live. And she's one of three women on the planet to have made a successful academic career from the study of bisexuality, polyamory, and other styles of love that emphasize fluidity and inclusiveness from a sex-positive, humanistic viewpoint. She owes this to the general genius of the University of Puerto Rico at Migueres. Did I pronounce that correctly? It's all right. Oh, it's all right. Okay, I'm from West Virginia. Uh, the two other women are in Australia and England, and she's very proud of this and hopes that it bodes well for the future. Her book, Of Ecosexual Theory, which is in the back there for sale, yeah? Yeah. and you should all get this, it's great. Gaia and the New Politics of Love is a 2010 Nautilus winner in cosmology and new science. She's also the editor of Bitopia, 2011, Bisexuality and Queer Theory, 2010, Plural Loves, Designs for Bi and Poly Living in 2005, and Women in Bisexuality, A Global Perspective, and that was in 2003. Her memoir, Eros, A Journey of Multiple Loves, was a 2007 Lambda finalist, and she has that right there. In July 2011, she will teach the first multilingual course in ecosexuality in Italy. You should all go to Italy. We like Italy a lot, okay? In 2010, she was keynoted at the World Polyamory Association Conference in California, and the BIRECON in England. She speaks English, French, Italian, and Spanish, and she has a fan page, a blog, an author's page. She's trying to shut me up now, which that's not gonna work. A web page, and these things are all listed on our website for the conference. So you should all go on there and find out more about Serena, because she's absolutely fabulous, and she's on the cutting edge of ecosexual research, and we're so honored to have her here today. So let's give Serena Andrelini Di Aflino a big hand, a big welcome. Thank you very much. We're happy to have you here. I have to unmute myself. of culture. Uh, we, you know, I love Tantra in India, 
But that's also an alternative tradition within the system of, of Hindu uh, mythology. So within Western mythologies, we really have all the alternatives we need if we want to look at them. And that's why I brought up that god Eros. These are bacteria. Bacteria. And this is one of the things that I've learned in, uh, in working on uh, Gaia and the new politics of love, is that love precedes humans and so does sex. You know, we, we haven't invented either. <laughs> We might believe we have, but we really haven't. So um, the majority of life, the majority of life forms, two of the realms, uh, two of the biological realms, and uh, the majority of, of the presence of life on our third planet is really unicellular. Okay, these, these are the prevailing creatures. And that's, and when they came about four billion years ago, that's when love and life and sex came about, and consciousness as well. Because when a cell moves in one direction and not the opposite, there's a decision. And when there's a decision, there is consciousness. And this is what I learned from Lynn Margulis, a marvelous scientist, a person that moves you very deeply with her knowledge of how all life is interconnected in a series of interconnected ecosystems that form this one ecosystem that scientists call Gaia. And I was very inspired by that because one of my languages is Italian. That's actually the first one I learned. And Gaia means gay in Italian. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> it's true. It means a woman who is gay, cheerful. Right? But, you know, whatever other reasons one might have to be cheerful, which could include uh, being more expressive sexually uh, in, or ima in imaginative ways. And so that struck me and I said, wow, Gaia is gay. Gaia is gay. That's an interesting proposition. And in fact, what Lynn Margulis teaches is that bacteria have sex with their neighbors. They just, you know, have sex. Bacteria don't need to have sex to reproduce. Each bacterium has all it needs to, to reproduce. <coughs> but they have lots of sex and they have lots of fun with it. And they uh, do it for fun. They do it to rejuvenate themselves. They do it to exchange genes and revitalize the species. They really don't do it for reproductive reasons. And I thought that was quite queer and quite interesting. And so I said, well, there's something to learn from bacteria. If you go to the next, yeah, here's more bacteria having sex with their neighbors. Okay, and here is, uh, I want to refer to what uh, Ro uh, Robert was talking about, the census. Um, these are the different, uh, the different sensors that we have. And as you see, they are all made of the same element, recombined. This is the idea of life and love and sex as symbiosis. That we evolve by symbiosis. We evolve by different pieces aggregating together and collaborating to make us what we are. We are a bit of an aggregation of all the different cells that live within us. And that gives a whole different perspective on prior perception and all this diversification of what is considered the senses that um, relates to, to what Robert was, was talking about. And so then when we look at nature, we see that nature itself expresses this love for love because there are so many things with nature that, that are not functional. They're just there to attract us, to be beautiful. And this is from an ecosexual poem. Just one example. Okay. So here's three concepts. First is guilt Gaia. Guilt, I was told uh, about MILF, sort of B-movie type of uh, concept, also some kind of porn. And I thought, OK, that's very nice. But it doesn't apply to me, actually, because I am a grandmother. Nonetheless, there are also guilts, I, I am yeah. told. <laughs>
just a bit, you know, it can be serene at times when you have that perfect bliss, nirvana. But, you know, you can be gay all the time. You can be gay. So that's why I gave myself this name in this book. And then the next book had that as a title for a scientific concept. So I said, well, you know, I can maybe unite these two and um, be, be a guilt Gaia, because really Gaia, the third planet, is very old. She's very old. She's much older than all of us. The oldest life form has been on this planet for four billion years. And those are the little little cells that you saw. We are the new kids on the block. We really are the new kids on the block, and we have to pay attention because often the new kids on the block are the first ones to get kicked out. And then there is the concept of makriya. In Romance languages, we have these uh, patria. There's something called patria, the fatherland. And I wondered, you know, why, why do we call it patria? Can't we call it matria, the motherland? Right? The motherland. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I have three matrias, three matrias, and these are the, land, the lands that have hosted me. And I think that there's a certain tropism to where you feel at home. Um, and there's three of them. Central Italy, which is where I grew up, and, um, and California, where I studied. And I came as a young um, student, graduate student. Uh, and then the Caribbean, which is where I live now, that has also become another matria. So I just wanted to put that in because it has to do with tropism. Tropism is the sense of where you properly belong in relation to the planetary system. Sometimes, you know, some people are oriented toward the West, so they have to be uh, living in a, in a West Coast type of area. It doesn't matter which continent, but it has to be the West. Some people prefer the land. They prefer to be in a, in a large continental uh, heartland. Others need to be on the coast. And these are all tropisms that have a lot to do with the more specific knowledge of the senses that Robert was talking about. And then the, the third word that I put in there is oikos, which is the same as you in Latin, echo. Oikos, oikos. This is the Greek word, oikos. It's a bit like matria. Why? Because it, it really means home. It means, it, means, um, it means home. It means in Spanish, hogar, the, the fireplace where people get together when they feel at home. But it's not a word of privacy. It's really a word of inclusion. It's a word of hospitality. Oikos is the place where you feel welcome. Or you feel welcome. And that has to do with wealth, who else is there, and what the synergy of the way the, the system, the ecosystem that you are welcomed by relates to you. So that's, that's the understanding of oikos that really comes from, from Greek. And it really expands so much on the concept of home because it really helps us understand that home is not when you lock yourself out, but rather the place from where you feel welcome and then you reach out to, which is very tantric as well. I don't know what's next. <laughs> oh, yes, but we can't go into that. These are, these are all the round forms of the Neolithic. This was a very matrifocal era where the 